what I have done is to give you a short introduction of um, not only the association but also the society and the Nicholas Symposium, where are the interactions. Then I go in through into a little bit what have we done over the last 20 years in LCH, what have we done and learned in HLH, and then I combine it and then I do a little bit of um, an overview, just three or four slides about research because I really believe that we can talk and talk and talk, but we have to know why is LCH, HLH, JXG happening. If we know the rationale or if we know what is happening, then I'm sure we can find a rationale for a cure, and that's what we all want to do. So, you all know about this one. And um, it's not only here in America, it's in Canada, it's in Portugal, it's in in, in Austria, it's in the Netherlands, it's in England. They are all family associations, and I think the interaction has been wonderful because I really think that communication is very important. We have to educate each other, and obviously, when you work in rare diseases, research is very difficult because everything that you want to do research on costs money. I mean, that's just the way it is, and you know, we're always very happy with every dollar, every euro, whatever is there, but if you want to have a research assistant or a research in the lab, you know, it's going to cost you thirty-five, forty thousand thousand dollars a year. I mean, that's just reality. So I think that with all the help of the associations, we did tremendously well. So the society, well, there are some crazy people like myself, and some other people who are here in the back, who think that histiocytosis is an intriguing disease. And it is intriguing. And, you know, as a parent, you don't want to hear it's an intriguing disease. But yesterday I was talking to the parents of Christopher, who's sitting in the back, and what we did in the last 20 years, we now know how to deal with this disease. We cannot cure them, but we know how to diagnose. Wherever you are, you can go on the net or you can go on the email and contact somebody. You know, I have this kind of patients. I get every week at least one, if not two patients on my internet, on my email. People ask me, they send me pictures and they said, you know, what should I do? And although it's very nice because this is the way how we can help. Some people, they say, can I come over to the Netherlands so you can treat my child? And I always say, no, because the physician in your area can be my eyes. And if he knows what to do for your son or your daughter, then the next time he might think about it himself so he can diagnose earlier. I think that has been wonderful over the years. So I think this society who almost, you know, at the same time as the association was, was sort of organized, did wonderful. In the beginning, we only talked about one or two cases at the meetings. It was, you know, more or less talking, we have a difficult case here, but now when you go to the History Seed Society meetings, it's really a lot of fundamental research because we want to know why are these diseases happening. And I think that, although my heart is in LCH, I think the, the way that we learned a lot about diseases in HLH has been an example for a lot of other diseases in the world. And then there's this funny think tank, the Nicholas Symposium, there's this family in Greece the Cantillanus family who have their son Nicholas who had LCH and they interacted with a physician John Pritchard who passed away uh, half a year ago and lots of us were there at his funeral because he has been instrumental in the world of histiocytosis. He diagnosed Nicholas at a very young age and started treatment and then the father and mother asked, so what can we do? What can we do to give back? And John, with his bright, bright mind, thought, well, let's have a think tank. So every year, about 20 people from all around the world, they are coming to Greece, to Athens. And during the weekend, in beautiful weather, but inside, and luckily with an air conditioning as well, mm -hmm. we talk about what could cause LCH. There are 15 people, basic researchers, who've never heard of this disease. They are flew in, and there are five clinicians, and they talk a little bit the basics about LCH. And then the people, let's say they talk about, you know, there's a researcher who's doing Epsom bar virus, a certain virus. He talks for half an hour about his research, and then for half an hour we have discussions, interactions. Would this be the cause of LCH? How could we find out whether EBV, Epsom bar virus, is the cause of LCH? And I, I, I think that a lot of the fundamental thoughts came up this think tank, and a lot of those thoughts were put in action into research, which again has been funded by the association. So I think the interaction of the three groups has been one of the, the highlights in my own career. I think this is wonderful. So 
when we talk about histiosis, what are we talking about? Because it's a terrible word, histiosis. I think it's it's so difficult, at least for a non-native English speaking person. <laughs> well, there are proliferations of certain cells. And when I talk about the mononuclear phagocytic system, again, everybody here would say, you know, what the heck are you talking about? Well, there are two different, there are lots of cells in our body, but two important cells are dendritic cells and macrophages. And proliferations, whether benign or malignant of these cells, in combination with specific signs and symptoms, make the diagnosis either a dendritic cell, a Langerhans cell histiocytosis, or a macrophage proliferation, the hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. So we need a backbone to make these kind of diagnosis. And actually, one of the first steps of the histiocyte society that was already in 87 was put in a well-known medical journal, The Lancet, and they made a classification where class 1 was LCH, Class 2 was sinus histiocytosis, but also the two histiocytosis, and class 3 was the malignant um, diseases. <coughs> this has been very helpful. I think that this was a major step forward so people all around the world could go back to the Lancet and saw, okay, when I talk about a dendritic cell proliferation, we talk about lung ulcer histiocytosis. A little later in my talk, I'll come back because 10 years later we gave an update. We learned more about the cells, we had more biological information, but just as a background. So what did we do? Well, we have, with all those weird people in the, in the, in the world, in, in the histiocytosis, histiocyte society, we developed protocols. At the moment we have HLA 20, 2004, we have LCA3, and we developed an adult protocol for LCA the first on adults, which started about three or four years ago. Just to go back, dendritic cells, Langerhans cells, it's a group of cells and they all come from the same cell. And just so, um, you know, that is for us sort of the baseline, why are we talking about histiocytosis? So, proliferation of these cells are called dehistiocytosis, just some background. So, lots of different <laughs> kinds of patients, you can see them everywhere, and I will go back, I will talk a little bit more about LCH, and some of those patients will come back. And actually, this little guy is probably the cause that I'm here. He was the first patient with LCH, you know, now, you know, 25 years ago, who had the disease in his gut. And um, um, I, I probably also have to thank him because he showed me the way what a person can do in the world of his So it has been tremendous. Within the histiocyte society, we made sort of agreements how to diagnose. And this is a staining with CD1A, so all the Langerhans cells, when you give, let's call it a an, an, an kind of um, a soup, it, when it colored red, then you know that there are dendritic cells, that there are Langerhans cells. This is the way to make the diagnosis LCH. With electron microscopy, a certain a kind of microscope where you can go into more depth, we also can find specific granulase, paper granules, and actually... Those have been important to make the switch originally from the disease that was called histiocytosis X to Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Because in the beginning of the last century, um, we called the disease LCH histiocytosis X because we knew there were histiocytes involved, that's in the name, and X was because we didn't know what was the cause or what kind of cells we were talking about. And then Dr. Nazelov, who has been the founding president of the histiocyte society, showed that in LCH or in histiocytosis X, the key player, let's call them the quarterback, are cells that have Beerberg granule, so they should be lung hull cells. So that made the change from histiocytosis X to lung hull cell histiocytosis. And I really believe that you should call a disease a name that is caused to the, to the, um, the cell involved. Um, so I, I think that lung hull cell histiocytosis, although difficult, LCH is easier, makes a lot of sense to call it that way. <coughs> 